each and every person out there. Don't forget about that clicking up thing, you know what I mean? Be to yourself. Stay to yourself. Trust nobody. Trust nobody. After dark. You know what I mean? Straight mm -hmm. up. My closest friends did me in. My mm -hmm. closest friends, my homies, people who I done took care of their whole family. I done took care of everything for them, looked out for them, put them in the game, everything turned on me. Fear is stronger than love. Remember that. Mm -hmm. Fear is stronger than love. All the love I gave didn't mean nothing when it came to fear. So it's all good. But I'm a soldier. I always survive. I constantly come back. You know what I mean? Only thing that can kill me is death. That's the only thing that ever stopped me is death. And even then, my music will live forever. I think that my mother, like a lot of people, like a lot of them, like Fred Hampton, Mark Clark, uh, Harriet Tubman, they felt like they were laying tracks for the, the, the generation to come. My, I think my mother knew that freedom wouldn't come in her lifetime, just like I know that it won't come in mine. Hmm. But it's a matter of either we stay like this or somebody sacrifices. Somebody laid a track so we don't stay in a 360 degree deadly circle. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Somebody has to break out and risk, you know, losing everything and being poor and getting beat down. But somebody has to do something. The good part about it is that we get to show the human side of the cops doing what they do because it is always my belief that cops are just a gang unto themselves with the good and the bad. Just like I believe the gangbangers on the street got good and bad, like police officers do. They got stress and they got character flaws that come from their lifestyles. I could be the, the best actor anybody ever seen given the chance, the opportunity, and the experience, and the lessons from people, I could be the best. But right now, I don't even wish to be the best. I just want to be one of them. If you look at it from a stereotypical point of view, like how people say, you know, all your troubles with the law, how could you play a cop? Just from a stereotypical point of view, who could play a cop better? I've seen them in their evil, when, when they think nobody's looking. I've seen the compassion. I've seen the anger. I've seen the, the jealousy, I've seen the fear, I've seen respect, and I've seen hate from cops. Anybody, you know what I mean? I've been there. I just got out of maximum penitentiary. I got arrested like 12 times last year, you know what I mean? Some my, some my mistake, some destiny, some fate, and some unwarranted, you know what I mean? But for whatever reason, I got to see police more than I wanted to. So for that reason alone, I'm the perfect perfect choice for the for the role I can't explain why I shine and no one else shines I think everybody shines in different things and a lot of things I can't do I can't play basketball like every other black person in America but I can act I, I know how to go to that true spot in myself because I'm there every day I can be me I can be whoever because I'm true to me I can go to neutral easily a lot of people, black, white, Mexican, young or old, fat or skinny, have a problem being true to themselves. They have a problem looking in the mirror and looking directly into their own souls. The reason I sell six million records, the reason I could go to jail and come out without a scratch, the reason I could walk around, the reason I am who I am today is because I can look directly into my face and find my soul. It's there. It's not sold. I didn't sell it. It's still within me. I still feel it. My heart is still connected to my body. So I, I could, any character I'm going to bring that intensity, that truth, that honesty to it because I have to repay for, for that blessing from black Jesus, from God. I have to pay for that by shining. If he give you the, the voltage and you waste it, that's the curse. He gave me the voltage, I'm a shine. It's not mine, it's from God, it's God. Not that it's so special that nobody got it, but all of our gifts and blessings and, and our strengths and our weaknesses come from God come from black Jesus or whoever comes from within you, you know what I mean? So it's not really tricky. It's, everybody can do it if they just can go to that spot. I guess all the things that happened to me in my life allow me to go there easier. There's a song called already called Fortune and Fame. Um, and it's like the hook goes, something we all adore. It's the one thing worth dying for. Nothing but pain stuck in this game. Searching for fortune and fame, something we all adore. The one thing we die for, nothing but pain, stuck in this game. Searching for fortune and fame. That's what I hear. It's, it's, it's so 
basic that we all want to be famous and noticed and watched, and we all want money and riches, and we all, we all want the finest out of life from, a, from the most heartless gangbanger to the most uh, virtuous police officer. Let me, how do you pronounce your name? Tupac. Tupac. Mm -hmm. Remember, like two, like two, and Pac, like pocket. You won't go wrong. Just Tupac. What's your best Christmas memory? Um, let me see. When I thought we didn't get any gifts for Christmas, I was in Baltimore. We didn't get, I thought we didn't get nothing. It was a knock on the door. My sister's principal from her school came and they had like this charity, whatever, where they give like the turkey to the poor family on the block. We was the poor family. So we got this turkey, I got some cheap boots, you know, got a little cheap trinkets. But on Christmas, you want as many trinkets as possible. And so I got a whole bunch of little tiny things. It was cool. We got free cheese, free beans, free butter, free everything. All that little government surplus stuff. But on Christmas, you need it. I mean, as opposed to us having an empty refrigerator, empty nothing. So I just remember when it first came, you know, and it's always like a Christmas carol playing around Christmas time on somebody's TV. And I just remember that first feeling, like really feeling like, you know, dang, this is Christmas. You know, this is like the give, give thing. <laughs> the give, give thing. That's when I used to feel the sorriest for my mother. It's because there was no man there, you know, and this is a woman, my mother. She had to tell us, you know, Mary. she had to make it like Mary, and there was nothing there. There was no, there wasn't even regular dinner, let alone Christmas dinner, you know. And she had to, like, explain to us how, like, I mean, it's so hard to sell that all we need is each other's speech, especially when your stomach hurts, you know. And she's telling us that as our stomachs go, she's going, all we need is each other. It's me. <laughs> But I thought it was just so beautiful how she just would be strong and she would do it. And she would never use that time to go, your fathers are really jerks, you know, they really left me here. But they did. Our fathers really did leave her. And, and my, my, I mean, our fathers, like my, my father and my sister's father, different fathers, but they really did leave us. And, you know, they didn't call on Christmas to help my mother explain why the hell we ain't getting no gifts. They was just like, you know, with they woman, wherever they was, being big shoddy, being Santa Claus to somebody else's kids. And so... I mean, no love taken from my father, God rest his soul, but, I mean, whew. I mean, I, I got it. He better not expect nothing big on Christmas. Tell me about some of the special things that someone growing up in the inner city and in your situation or, uh, deals with. Okay. Man, it's like, mm, that's deep. It's like, when you're born, usually, you're born to a dynasty or an empire, right? You're born, like, as a junior or, you know, following in your father's footsteps. You always tell oh, your, your father, he did this, or oh, your father, oh, your grandfather, he did this, or we got this, or the family heirlooms. There's none of that in, in the outer city. I call it the outer city because we left out. There's no nothing. We don't get any family heirloom, the family crest, all that stuff that you would think is so important was meaningless. Because we, we, I mean, come on. Our family crest was cotton. You know what I'm saying? It's like, man, it's like the only thing we can really leave behind is culture, is music, you know? And, and, and dignity and determination. That's what we had. So it's like, I feel as though I'm cheated because instead of me fulfilling my prophecy, I have to start one. Instead of me, you know, doing a good job and carrying on the empire, I have to build one. And that's, that's a hell of a job for a 21-year-old. You know what I'm saying? That's a hell of a job for any youngster, male or female, to have to build an empire for your family. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's like, especially when the odds is that, you know, you, have, you know that somebody else who lives in the inner city, the real inner city, suburbia, who, when he's born, I mean, 16, he gets a car, at automatic. You know, there's money in the bank for college. You know, it's Christmases, go to vacation somewhere. Our vacations was down the street, cross town, grandma house. You know what I'm saying? That was the vacation. Or, you know, or jail, to be even more real. And I hate to make this, like, sad story, but it's real. Because this world is such a, um, and when I say this world, I mean it. I don't mean in an ideal sense. I mean in uh, every day, every little thing you do. It's such a, gimme, gimme, gimme. Everybody back off. You know, everybody's like, you taught that from school, everywhere. Big business. If you want to be successful, you want to be like Trump, 
Gimme, gimme, gimme. Push, 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 push. Step, step, step. Crush, crush, crush. That's how it all is. And it's like, nobody ever stopped. Just, you know, I feel like, instead of us just being like, slavery's bad, slavery's down. Bad whitey, bad whitey. I mean, all right, let's stop that. And everybody's smart enough to know that, I mean, we've been slighted. And we want ours. And I don't mean by, like, uh, ours, 40 acres and a mule, because we're past that. But we need help. I mean, for us to be on our own two feet, us meaning youth or us meaning black people, whatever you want to take it for. For us to be on our own two feet, we do need help. Because we have been here. We have been a good friend. If you want to make it a relationship type thing, we have been there. And now we deserve our payback. It's like you got a friend that you don't never look out for. You know, you dressed up in jewels. Now America's got jewels and they got, they paid and everything. And they lending money to everybody except us. And it's like, you know, everybody need a little help on, on their way to being, you know, self-reliant. I mean, if this is truly a melting pot in the country where we care about it and Lady Liberty got a hand like this, she really loves us, then we really need to be like that. And it needs to be the black kids. And if there's a, a white person who got money, then you need to help them. He need to help black kids, Mexican kids, Korean kids, whatever. But it needs to be real. And it need to be before we all die and then you say, oh, I made a mistake. We should have gave them some money. We really should have helped these folks. It's going to be too late. You know what I'm saying? And then that's when you got to pay your own karma. And that's when God make you punish. When you, God punishes you. Because I feel like, you know, it's too much money here. I mean, nobody should be hitting Lotto for 36 million and we got people starving in the streets. That is not idealistic. That's just real. That is just stupid. There's no way Michael Jackson should have, or whoever Jackson, should have a million thousand, drupal billion dollars and then there's people starving. There's no way. There's no way. That these people should own planes and their people don't have houses, apartments, shacks, drawers, pants. I know you're rich. I know you got $40 billion, but can you just keep it to one house? You only need one house. And if you only got two kids, can you just keep it to two rooms? I mean, why well, have 52 rooms and you know there's somebody with no room? It just don't make sense to me. It don't. And then these people celebrate Christmas. They got big trees, huge trees, all the little trimmings. Everybody got gifts, and then somebody's starving. And they're having a white Christmas. They're having a great Christmas, eggnog and the whole nine. That's not fair to me. I think that there's, when there's hopelessness, people revolt. Because it's like there's nothing that's like, you know, it's like we're going, is America going to help us ever? You know, because, I mean, we know for a long time they haven't. Are they ever? And it's like all these things are showing us no. And there's the, you know there's somebody going, no, they're not going to help you. No, they're not going to help you. And then, of course, we see it. No, they're not helping us. All BS aside, it all comes down to we got to survive. I mean, even warriors put their spears down on Sundays. We got to survive here in this country. Because I'm not going back to Africa. We got to survive here. And for us to survive here, white folks, black folks, Korean folks, Mexican folks, Puerto Ricans, we got to understand each other. We got to take, take a bigger chance. And when I say Americans, people think I'm talking about Uncle Sam. I mean, like, actually Uncle Sam with the gray hair and the flag. I mean, you. 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 The guy, you know, you. The mechanic, wherever. You. I mean, you need to do something. You need to check yourself and see how racist you are. 